I want to show you today how to make a wonderful, easy, very satisfying chocolate cake that just happens to be naturally gluten free. It's been in my repertoire for quite some time. I used to make quite a bit of them in my restaurant days and it's nice because it really is fast. So here's what we're going to do. I have 8 ounces of 60% chocolate and 8 ounces of sweet cream butter in the bowl. I'm going to melt this. What I'm going to do in, to save some washing is to beat the whites, take them out, and then beat the yolks with the sugar. So the, I need 5 egg whites and 8 yolks. So it looks like I'll have a few whites left over, but that's all right. So I'll set the yolks aside for right now and separate it. I find the fastest and easiest way to separate is with the shell to shell back and forth and that goes pretty quick. So we're going to do that. I'm going to save the shells for my compost bin because the compost loves eggshells, lots of free calcium for the tomatoes. All right, now I'm going to start these going in the bowl. These eggs are at room temperature. If you're pulling eggs out of the refrigerator and they happen to be cold, you can put them in a bowl of warm water and that'll warm them up pretty quick. So I'm going to put these in a very ancient mixer. I bought this mixer in the 70s, believe it or not. And it has a few flaws, pretty much like me, but you know what? It works. While the egg whites are beating, I'm starting them off really slow, and then I'm increasing this. I've melted the butter with the chocolate, so I want to stir that together. And after these whites get a little bit of a foam on top, I'm going to increase the speed a little bit higher and higher until I get full speed and they have a soft peak. All right, these are done beating and you can tell that they have a nice soft peak and they will actually stay in the bowl when you tip it upside down. You don't want to overbeat these because they're going to become then too dry. So that is about perfect. And what I'm going to do is rubber spatula these out into the small bowl and then we're going to put in the sugar and the egg yolks and beat those until a ribbon forms. I'll show you what I mean when these are done with the ribbon fall but anyway there's so there is our eight yolks and pre-measured is my cup and a quarter of sugar and into the mixer that goes. Might have to scrape this bowl down, but isn't this simple so far? Okay, we'll beat this up now. All right, let's take a look at these. These have been beating for about five minutes and the color is a beautiful light, light yellow. And when I lift the beater, and you can see into the bowl, it forms a ribbon as it falls down into the bowl. And the reason we're doing this is to put enough air into these yolks and sugar to dissolve the sugar, but also to hold the weight of the chocolate and butter. Now I'm going to add the chocolate and butter all at once because it's easier so you don't wear it and then we're going to mix this up ever so slightly doesn't take much I can even do this by hand I could put it back on the mixer but it's really not necessary and that's done do this a little bit with the spatula, get around the bowl and make sure we get all the way to the bottom to thoroughly incorporate the yolks and the sugar. Now what we're going to do is put in the egg whites and 
what you do is put in just a little bit at a time. You want to lighten this just slightly with a little bit of the whites. Then we'll add a little bit more and we're going to lighten it up a little bit more. And by doing this, you won't deflate the whites, but you will lighten up the batter, which is what this cake is all about because there's no flour to hold it together. Kind of making a chocolate souffle in a way. And just a little at a time, I'm going around the side, down through the middle, around the side, and down through the middle. And over and over. Now I think I can put in all of them. And the other thing that I'm going to add on this last turn, it's not necessary because the chocolate's good, but I'm going to add just about a half teaspoon of some good vanilla extract, not the fake stuff. And we're going to fold this in. Now what I've already done is prepared, in my case I did two six inch removable bottom pans but you can do this as one 10 inch pan too. Um, the reason I'm doing it in six inch pans is because this winter has been a little hard on the waistline. So I'm gonna keep one out and freeze the other one. These freeze beautifully. So see how nice and light that's getting now? It's over and around and we have everything off the bottom. Now, in my prepared pans, and all I did was over the sink you don't want this fat in a can getting on the floor. Spraying it ever so slightly. And then we're going to fill these up to hopefully what is going to be relatively even. Guess I could weigh it, but I'm going to eyeball it. And then these are going to go to the oven for about 30 to 35 minutes. Then to serve them with a raspberry sauce, which is really good. Or if you have a creme anglaise, if you want to make that, that's in another one of my videos. I'll give the link to that. But if you don't want to make the creme anglaise, here's a shortcut. I learned this from one of the great French chefs. Get some whole bean, like vanilla bean, really good vanilla ice cream with the bean in it and melt it. And there's your creme anglaise. Anyway, these are a little full, but they're going to cook up nicely. And these are going to go to a 350 degree oven for about 35 minutes. Well, while the cakes are in the oven baking, let's make a fast raspberry sauce. These are some raspberry preserves that I had from, actually the raspberries were from my garden last year. And so I turned them into jam. But what I want to do for this is I want to sift out the seed. So I warmed it up for a minute and a half in the microwave, or you could put it in a pan. And now we're going to run this through and sort of press it through this sieve to get rid of the seeds. And I'm going to do this first before I, we see if it needs thinning. It depends on, you know, the kind you're buying, whatever. And you might as well do a whole jar of it because you'll find that this makes a really good spread on toast, on any kind of dessert. Peach melba in the summer, when that comes into season, what you're in effect making is a melba sauce. And it's much nicer with the seeds out of it. Of course, if you buy it from a purveyor or you know, any of the farmers in the summer, they have to charge more for it if they're charging uh, or if they're uh, selling seedless because it's a little labor intensive to get the seeds out. But like I say, it's much nicer and it's a much prettier sauce, especially on this cake. So we'll do this. I'll show you what this looks like after I get the seed out while we're patiently waiting the cakes to get done. Sure does smell good in here. All right, so now we have a seedless jam. And consistency 
is just a little bit thick for sauce. It has plenty of sugar because it was jam to begin with. So I'm going to thin this with just maybe a tablespoon of lemon and perhaps just a little bit of water since we want this more of a sauce consistency. And I got, it looks like about 95% of the seed out, but some of it did go through the sieve itself. You could, if you wanted, put this in a blender or an immersion blender to get it a little more smooth and a little bit more clear. But see, that's just a little bit too thick. So we'll put a little bit of water in there. The flavor of the preserves was really good to begin with, so I know it will take a bit of a thin. And this should make a lovely sauce when it's done. This is looking much better. So let's stir, make sure we get it from the bottom. Yeah, that's about right. Could even go a little bit thinner. But I want to check the flavor. I don't want to dilute it too much. Nope, excellent. Oh my God, heavenly. I just pulled these out of the oven. You can see how they puffed up a little bit. And the way I tested these was thermometer, some kind of a toothpick, something thin, and down through the center, and it's coming up relatively clean. So having said that, now I'm just going to let these cool a little bit, and then I'll take them out of here. Now while this is cooling, I think that I am going to gild the lily and melt down a little bit of chocolate with some heavy cream to put over the top of these and then garnish with some slightly toasted sliced almonds. All right, so to make this chocolate ganache to go on top, I'm going to take a shortcut as always, put a little bit of heavy cream in a bowl and I'm gonna warm this in the microwave. Then I'll put the chocolate into the cream and melt it for the top of these. Normally you put the chocolate in a bowl heat the cream, pour it over the top, but this will accomplish the same thing. And we don't have to get something else dirty. All right, so this cream took about a minute and a half. And what I'm going to do is now put some of this Ghirardelli 60% chocolate in there, already in chips so we don't have to break it up, that's easy. And then slowly stir this. I have the sheet pan on this marble that just came out of the oven so this marble is nice and warm and that will help facilitate melting these chocolate chips. I'm stirring these from the center out to not incorporate any air into this. You just want to slowly stir it and get that chocolate to melt. And the reason I'm doing this, I didn't do it any sooner, is I want this still sort of fluid to be able to put on top of the warm cakes after it sets up then you have to go through the whole rewarming and it's just a pain in the neck so this is sort of a last minute thing and you can see this coming together quite lovely this will make a nice little chocolate top for that just to gild the lily so to speak okay now for the moment of truth so here's what we're going to do. These have removable bottoms, which is just great. So I'm going to take this plate, put it over the top, flip this upside down, and with wonderful luck, of course, this is coming out. Lovely. Now I'm going to take this offset spatula and run the knife there. Okay, now where it came up over the sides, I'm just gonna push that underneath a little bit. I could cut it away, but God, that part is so good that I hate to, I hate to get rid of it. Now, if you didn't have enough chocolate, you could just dust this with powdered sugar. That works really well too. I personally like just a little bit of extra chocolate over it. So what I'm gonna do with this melted chocolate is put a little on top. 
take my offset spatula, I should put this on a cake stand, and kind of swirl it around the top and let it just naturally drip over the sides. I'm not going to frost or let the chocolate go over the entire side, just let it drip slightly. Now I'm going to take the tip and that'll act as a little garnish on top. There you have a cake. If I happen to have any fresh raspberries, which I don't because it's winter, freezing cold up here, I would put some fresh raspberries in the center. But instead, what I'm going to do is just take some slivered almonds that I lightly toasted in a pan. You can do them in a pan over a medium low heat. You don't want to do them in too high a heat because you don't want them to burn and once they start toasting, it's kind of like caramelized sugar if you don't keep an eye on it. It's over before they get done and we'll put a little in the center. Now we just have to let that set up so that I can cut a piece and we'll serve it with this luscious raspberry sauce. Okay, so here you have two really wonderful, easy chocolate cakes. Doesn't take long to make. And like I say, there's all sorts of variations. You know, if you didn't want to make the chocolate um, ganache for the top, you could just sprinkle it with powdered sugar. That works well. Or the raspberry sauce is heavenly. Or with the powdered sugar on top, Another shortcut is to take the vanilla ice cream with a vanilla bean in it, melt it down, then you have a wonderful creme anglaise. Pretty much the same thing. Creme anglaise, freeze it up, and it's called French vanilla ice cream. So having said that, I'm probably not going to cut this and eat this on camera because it's obvious I've already done enough of that over the winter. You'll have to trust me. I've been making these for so long. I know it's really, really good. But do try it with the raspberry sauce. If you have any extra raspberry sauce, serve that on more desserts or like I say, a spread for toast. Uh, peaches and ice cream are perfect. Peach Melba, love that one. Old fashioned, classic dessert. But anyway, there you have it. I do hope you try it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel and share with your friends. See you again on the next episode.